G'day! Welcome back to Mods and Movements. Today, we're going to be building a skeleton diver watch with parts sourced from AliExpress. Let's take a look at all the parts. To start, we've got a 41mm diver case. Next, we've got a sailcloth strap with white stitching. At the heart of the watch, we've got an NH35 movement. And we're going to be swapping out the black date wheel for a red and white version. And of course, for a skeleton watch, we need a skeleton dial. And we've got a couple of sets of hands to choose from as well. And like every build, not everything always goes to plan. Let's get started. Righto, so we're going to start by swapping out this date wheel. And to do that, there's four screws holding down the date wheel maintaining plate. So we'll whip those out and pull off the date wheel maintaining plate. With a bit of Rodico, carefully lift off the date wheel. Now, this part can be a little bit tricky, so we carefully place down the date wheel. Now, we want to do it without bumping that plate that's sitting in the middle. You can see here, I'm holding it down. And there's a little arm here, the date jumper. We just need that to sit in between the little notches on the date wheel, and that'll hold it in place. And sometimes, that can be a little easier said than done. But once we've got that sitting in place, let's reinstall the date wheel maintaining plate. And we'll grab the four screws and we'll chuck them back into. Once we've got everything tightened down and everything back in its right place, we'll go ahead and check the functions of the movement and make sure everything's working correctly. We can move on to the dial. So the dial is where I actually had the first of my issues. So because the case is a, a 3.8 case with the crown at the four o'clock or 3.8 position, you need to make sure you remove the correct feet on the dial and I accidentally removed the wrong feet. So I'll be removing all the feet and I'll be using dial dots. The next issue I came across was actually the physical size of the dial. It actually says it's a 28.9 mil dial and the case says that it will fit a 28.8 mil dial. So that's 0.1 of a millimeter difference. I thought it was gonna be fine and it was not. So I've used the Dremel and I've cut it down a little bit until it fit and it worked perfectly and it was actually pretty easy. Just gonna have to make sure we give it a really good clean off. Before we get started on the hands, I like to make sure I get the majority of all the dust and smudges and everything off. I like to use this little brush and this silicon wand which helps to get all the smudges off all the chrome parts. Now before we place any hands, we get the date wheel set to the midnight position, right where the date wheel jumps to the next day. And we get our skeleton hour hand. Here I'm using the one mil presser. And get that set in place. We'll just make sure we've got that sitting nice and flat as well. We're not dragging on the dial. After every hand that I set, I like to check and make sure we're pretty close to that midnight, usually within five to 10 minutes and we're bang on. And for the minutes hand, I've got a 0.6 mil head on the hand press and just making sure we place the minutes hand at midnight. Make sure everything's lined up nice and straight and try and press it down nice and flat. We'll check again to see where midnight is. About two minutes. That's not too bad. Now we'll move on to my favorite hand, the seconds hand. So we just got to make sure that's sitting right on that pinion before we push it down. Once we know we're in the right spot, nice firm press. Once we get it in the right spot. Super satisfying. Now let's check all the functions are working as they should. Perfect. Now just one final check to check midnight. We'll see where we've ended up. Bang on, pretty good. 
Our next step will be getting the movement cased up and ready for final assembly. But before we do that, we're going to clean the case and crystal down, make sure there's no lint or dirt, and make sure everything's nice and clean. Blow off all the lint, wipe all the smudges off, Rodico, try to pick up any extra lint that I can see through the loop. I basically just repeat that process a couple of times, looking through the crystal into the light, make sure we're all good, everything's clean. We'll get this movement cased up. And everything looks like it fits well. So our next step is going to be fitting the crown and getting it measured to length. So we'll chuck it in, we'll measure from the edge of the crown down to the crown tube, get it removed, mark it up, and cut it to length. Always make sure we cut it a little bit longer than what we need, then we can file it down until we get the exact length. Once we've got all the burrs removed, and we've got the length correct, a little bit of Loctite, screw it down onto the crown stem, remove the extra Loctite, and we'll get it fitted up to the movement and check that it screws all the way down into the case. Once we've got the length correct, then we can fit the case back. I've greased up the case back gasket, get that screwed down nice and tight. Then we can start on the bezel. Remove the backing to the double sided tape with the tweezers. Carefully peel that off. Then I like to line the bezel up with midnight. Then you know it's in exactly the right spot when you turn it. Get that bezel insert pressed down nice and firmly. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Now it's starting to look like a real watch. Satisfying click on this one too. Then we can fit the sailcloth strap. And we're not gonna need that spring bar tool because these are a quick release. And that's it. Now to take it out for a wrist roll. This has been the first video for a while. So thanks for coming back and checking out the channel. I've got a couple more builds here ready to go. So keep an eye out for those coming out soon. Like, subscribe, comment down below with any builds you'd like to see me do. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.